Hello and welcome to a very wet Donsfold in Surrey. Now Donsfold is quite near where the Top Gear track. We're not actually at the Top Gear track, we're uh, actually in the village of Donsfold. I'm right, uh, the Donsfold Cricket Club is right behind me. So I've come here today to do another a shoe test, or shoe off as I called them. This time, instead of doing a flat circuit, I'm going to try one which is a bit more rolling with a couple of two quite steep climbs in the, in the middle. So it's about a two mile circuit and I'm going to change things up a bit this time. I'm going to run in the next percent first, which I've got on my feet here, if you can see. So what we're going to do this time, because it's a rolling circuit, rather than try and pace it by pace itself, what I'm going to do this time is going to use my stride. I've got the Stride Wind, uh, which is the newer foot pod on the left uh, foot here. And on the right foot, I've got the older Stride Summit. Now the difference between the two basically is one detects wind and the other one doesn't. Um, but as this is sort of a tarmac rolling road course, um, the main, I think, driver here is going to be the elevation. It's a bit windy today, but it's also sort of country lane, so I'm hoping it'll be fairly sheltered. You can see that flag there is uh, blowing a bit, and then it go goes calm a bit. So it's probably about a 10 mile an hour, probably about a 10 mile an hour wind, I think. So for this test, based on the test I did last week, uh, my marathon pace was around about 290 watts. Now, for those who don't know uh, watts, it's basically, simplistic, it's a measure of how much effort you're doing. It's a very common theme now in, uh, in cycling, where many of the cyclists now use power meters. Now, the uh, stride doesn't actually sort of measure your um, power directly, but it does it by some very clever algorithms and stuff. So it does seem to be a pretty good accurate um, a way of telling how far you're going. And last week, all my powers for similar paces were basically pretty much the same. So I hope it's gonna be a good test. And so this time I'm gonna make sure I don't try and run any of the efforts any harder than the other one. I'm just gonna look at the power and see if I can keep to an average of 290 throughout the two mile effort. So then I'm gonna again come back this time and look at uh, how my heart rate reacted to that and how the actual time pace of the run actually came out. So in theory, um, if um, it's harder to maintain the same power, it will take me longer to actually run the course. So that's the theory. So we need to see uh, what we can see. Then this time I'm gonna change things up a bit. I'm only gonna run four efforts. Gonna do the next percent first and uh, we'll come over to my car and I'll show the other shoe. So we're gonna start the effort right on this crossroads here uh, where the Sun Inn uh, pub behind me is. Quite kind of ironic on a day like today when uh, there was some sun earlier, but uh, I think if we're lucky to avoid getting wet, so much the better. So this is the way, it looks pretty much dead flat straight away. It's gonna be slightly into a headwind to start with. Then it gets a bit rolling and then I do a circuit and come back up up that way so literally it's sort of two miles and i think just over two miles um back to here my car's over there so i'll change shoes over there and we'll do the lap four times and see how we go hello this is the foot of the hill on the f um, early part of the circuit it looks quite steep though probably about five six seven percent i think um, there so it's certainly going to get the heart rate up and the power up if i don't uh, control the effort Okay, here are my shoes ready to go in the back of the car. So this time I'm gonna change things up, and as I said, and I'm gonna run in the next percent first, which I've got on. Uh, we're gonna go for the Zoom Fly 3 second. We're gonna go for the Adidas, Adios 4 from Adidas um, third. And we're gonna finish up with a new one this time. We're gonna go for the 4% Fly Knits. Last time, if you recall, the next percent came out um, way quicker than the others uh, by about 10 seconds per mile, over two miles. Uh, all the are the same, but we think that the uh, you think we just think that the four percent should uh, offer an advantage as well. So we'll see if we can do some tests to demonstrate that. Okay, I'm going to get going now. I've done my warm up. Uh, I've done about a mile. Did about just over a mile and a half warm up. So you should be ready to go. And uh, let's get this done. Okay, bye. Okay, run done in the next percent. I didn't feel too bad. First one out. Um, I think my power was averaging about two nine five. I just let it crept up to what I felt like a comfortable level so uh just over two miles 2.15 ish and i did about 14.35 so that's a benchmark there was two hills one uh sort of after about three quarters of a mile one right at the end which the second one was like long that was quite a sapping climb actually not not too bad but uh, on a two mile circuit you can certainly, certainly notice i've having to reduce my speed a lot to maintain the same power so it'll be interesting to see how these heavier shoes go now now, now i've got on the uh Speaking of heavy shoes, I've now got on the Zoom Fly 3s, which are the 
about 100 and I think about 100 and 15, 120 grams more heavier than the next percent. Uh, I think they're like 365 grams for me, whereas the next percent are around about 250 to 260. I have to check the exact amount. Anyway, so right, let's get on with this next one and see how we go. Bye. Okay, run done in the zoom flies. Now that's definitely felt harder, although the times was, it was only marginally slower. So the power was the same, about 295 average watts. It definitely felt like a lot harder as I was running, although interesting the time's the same. So I have to look at the heart rate. Obviously the heart rate's gonna be higher because it was the second interval. Um, so I'm now in the uh, Adios 4s here, as you can see. And these are obviously now a lot lighter and these are a lot more minimalist than the other two. In fact, I can feel that they're, uh, you can feel the ground a lot more already just, um, just walking about. So. Right, third interval to go, one more to go um, after that. Okay, see you later, bye. Okay, right in the Adios 4 done. Uh, they feel like sort of so uh, close to the ground these days that uh, they feel a bit tough. The power's a bit odd on the wind one. It seems to be getting more than the summit, a lot more. But so that sort of happened last week, so I need to look at the data there. That was a slightly slower time than um, the zoom flow, which is a slightly slower time than the next percent. So we're gonna put on now the 4%, and this is the last one, and We'll see how we go in that. Just got enough daylight left before it gets dark. Okay, bye. Okay, final run done in the 4%. Uh, it wasn't too bad. I started to feel a bit tired by now. It's a lot harder circuit than the uh, test circuit I did last week. So good job I did it four. I think the 4% are actually a size 12 in the UK for me. And I'm really better off in a 13 in Nike. So I do kind of feel that although these Oh, a nicely cushioned shoe. They're slightly short in the, in the toe box area. So maybe that's just something to bear in mind. Having said that, my time and power were, I think, pretty much the same. I think still out of those, the four quickest, trying to run even power was just the next percent by about five, five seconds. Um, so it'd be interesting to very have a look, analyze the data later. Certainly again, my feeling, even though I know the next percent were first, and obviously that's the easiest first, isn't it, when you're fresh. Uh, that certainly felt the easiest, the most cushioned, most importantly. The Adi Adios by far the least cushioned. And you kind of think, I have actually run a marathon in the Adios 1 boost version uh, in 19, uh, 19, 2016, I did 253. Uh, but I don't think I'd wear them again because A, they're also a bit slightly short. The 12 and a half in a Adidas is a bit short for me. I really could do with a half a size more, but they don't do them. And they just feel so low, low to the ground. So for those shoes, actually fairly new. I've only done about 50 miles in those in that version of the uh, Adios 4. Um, but I think they're okay for short races these days. But uh, next percent definitely wins on the cushioning. Will it win on the on the best shoe or the fastest shoe, the most efficient shoe, the one that takes the least running economy, the least effort, all that sort of stuff will come indoors later and we'll analyze the data. So thanks for coming along um, and uh, we'll see you, um, see you later on. Bye. Hello, so we've come back indoors now. This is actually quite a long time after I filmed that. That was actually filmed before Christmas and uh, I've now into mid-March, I've done my marathon that I was training for. But so I thought I would do uh, turn that into a video because that was the uh, the second of a series of three shoe off tests that I did. So I probably thought we need to get this one out to sort of show the context of the three I did. The first one was a sort of a flat two mile marathon pace effort. This one was the same but in a, on a rolling circuit, and the third one was a last two eight hundred test at the track. So I've done the videos for the first and the third. So this is sort of like in the one in the middle. So before we go on to talking too much about the actual times, I'll just have a recap of the circuit I used for this rolling test. So it's it was a place called Dunsfold, which is a uh, a place near to the Top Gear track. And if you if we pan the uh, the map here, the Dunsfold Aerodrome is actually where they're called Top Gear. So it's very close. So this. Um, circuit here is uh, actually in the village of Donsfold and there is a pub called the Sun Inn pretty much opposite where I uh, park my car. So uh, it goes off, starts off fairly flat down Orford Road and then down a hill then up a big hill here which I've uh, created a segment called uh, Orford Hill and then it you turn right and going down a road called Rams Lane, which is another circuit, and then you turn 
right at the bottom of that and then back up Knighton's Lane. I won't say up, he's actually sharply down for a bit and then he, he does ramp up quite steeply at the at the end, which is probably the steepest climb on this one. It's probably a steeper climb than the Wilford Hill one. And a short little flat bit back to back to the finish. So if we expand on the uh, the four runs, now what's interesting about this test compared to the other ones is there's probably not such a difference in the actual results here. Now, the first time here is the actual time I um, did on my stopwatch and the second time is the time for the actual segment. So the segment is probably just a bit less, um, but it's perhaps just to make sure that you've got a consistent timing. Both of those times seem pretty similar, obviously that was a bit shorter. So the first one I did, um, if we talk about the segment times, 14.29 in the next percent, obviously I was fresh, so the average heart rate uh, was lower, but the maximum interestingly got up pretty much the same as the other ones. I think that was because of the hill, Knighton's Hill at the end, you see that there at the end where I got my max heart rate to the top of that hill, very similar. Um, so the pace here was um, worked out about my marathon pace. I did 2.56 in Seville. Um, but this time, I don't forget, I was trying to do this on even power. So I had the two stride um, power meters on. One was the wind version uh, and one was the older summit version. So interesting on the next percent, it only detected 1% wind, whereas the other three shoes were a bit more a uh, bit more marked a bit more like the sort of 10 mile an hour wind that uh, I actually noticed so in that sense I was probably having to work harder in the uh, next percent to actually meet that 295 figure so that might possibly explain why those times are slightly slightly um, quicker in the next percent to to all the other ones so what I've also done here is I've taken out the component of the air percent and um, just have like a, the net power from the stride wind without the effect of the wind. And then compare that to the actual power meter, the stride power meter on my other foot, which was actually measuring it uh, without the wind component. And it's interesting there that those two sets of numbers here are all pretty much identical. Um, so that's probably almost a better test than these numbers, even though that's the number I was trying to match when I was actually running. Um, so the highest power I got, um, was actually in the next percent, um, which also means I got the fastest time. So that's kind of logical in a way. That perhaps shows that there wasn't quite so much effect, just pure, pure time uh, on this session than uh, in the other ones. Um, I think also what was interesting here when I came into the Zoom Fly, I was thinking that a very heavy shoe, Zoom Fly being about 100, at least 100 grams heavier than the next percent uh, in my UK 13 size. I've really struggled up the hills. Well, actually, that's not actually the case. And if you look at the two uh, segment times for the hill segments, um, one three seven there and one two one, it's all pretty much pretty much of a muchness, really. So, in actual fact, the zoom fly again did rather better than my sort of general feeling of them, which is probably the second time that that's actually happened. But I still find they were a very clunky shoe and. Uh, I've never really tried them at any effort more than these um, two mile efforts. So I still reserve judgment on those. Now when we came on to the Adios 4, um, now that was actually the slowest time. And although the power was pretty similar, uh, I do seem to remember when I was running in that one, they actually started to rain. So that might account for the fact that it got slightly harder perhaps. Um, Perhaps not much in it. The heart rate, so actually the max heart rate was slightly less. Um, I think on this hill one, I seem to remember I thought I was getting my heart rate a bit too high and I eased off. So I think that's why the 142 there is not necessarily reflective of the effort, more the fact I sort of deliberately eased off. And then again on this hill one here, had the lowest maximum heart rate uh, in the Adios 4 going up the hill and the quickest, the quickest sprint in the vertical covers to the end. And then we moved into the 4% fly knits. Uh, again, a pretty much identical performance to the uh, to the others, really. Um, the uh, the power with the wind was just fractionally the highest. Uh, without the wind, um, pretty much in the middle again. And uh, all the other stats look similar. So, 
In this test, the actual numbers don't really reveal a huge amount to me. I think all I can say is that the I do feel that in, in this test, the next percent felt the most cushioned, um, which obviously proved to be the case. I ended up using it to good effect in my marathon and uh, all, the, all the other tests I've had. So, um, but what I think what what you also say that you know that next percent here is not a magic wand on this on this particular test. So I think I need to do a sort of a summary video where I t take all my results from these three tests and had the, uh, the headline results. But certainly on this uh, rolling circuit one, I said, although I got the fastest time, it did have a fraction in the highest power. So although it was also first, so maybe there's an element of being fresh and um, uh, and that as well. So um, yeah, an interesting test in so much that it didn't actually reveal that there was a huge advantage, in, if any, in the next percent in this test, really, which is in a way quite reassuring because um, when you do these runs, you don't really want to be thinking that you're getting a huge advantage just wearing a shoe. I think for me, the next percent is mainly the advantage around the actual the cushioning and just the sort of the, the feeling of not getting really heavy legs towards the end. I mean, I did a run today in the Adios 5, which is like the next version of the Adios 4, a very pretty similar shoe to mine, so a bit more light strike than the, the boost in the four. And uh, you can certainly feel much more the low ground to lower ground uh, feeling in those ones. But then you know, I've got a nice pace on those. I was, since I've had a bit of downtime since the marathon, I was I was pootling along on a rolling circuit. And funny enough, also from Dunsold, in a very, a very similar pace to my marathon pace. So obviously retained some fitness. So as I said, um, summary of this one is that not a huge amount of uh, difference between any of these shoes all would do a turn. So um, really comes down to uh, which one you like. And I think definitely I like the next percent more just in fact, she just felt easier to run in from a cushioning point of view and uh, and that stuff. So hope you found that interesting and um, we'll uh, see you on the next one. Okay, bye.